How much time would it take us to get to Neptune? Did you know that we have only been able to visit Neptune once in history with our current technology? Yeah, Neptune is so far away that even our fastest spaceship would take more than a decade to reach it. Furthermore, if no astronauts set out to visit the last planet in the solar system, they would not have enough fuel to return to Earth. But why is it so tough to reach Neptune? How long would it take us with current technology to visit that planet, and why have we only gone there once? Stay with us while we answer all of your queries. Hello and welcome to Z. Subscribe the channel and ring the bell to receive our daily videos. Were we only there once? Although it may seem difficult to believe, the ice giant Neptune has only been visited by one spacecraft in human history, the Voyager 2 mission, which sailed close to Neptune's orbit in 1989. The Voyager 2 probe was part of the Voyager project, which included two space exploration probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, whose major goal was to study the outer planets, about which little was known at the time. One of the most convincing arguments for designing these spaceships is that on certain dates, a big event would occur that would not be repeated for more than a century. That event was a planetary alignment between Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune that occurs every 176 years. The intention was for the Voyager exploratory probes to take advantage of this unique planetary alignment to accomplish speeds that could not be achieved with any fuel, using something we've already discussed on this channel, gravity assist. The only way to travel without a fuel. Gravity assist is a space maneuver in which a ship uses the gravity of another planet to adjust its speed and direction. It saves fuel and accelerates spaceships to speeds they would never attain with traditional fuel, allowing them to reach their objectives in less time. Gravity assist works as follows. When a ship approaches a planet, it enters the gravitational well created by the planet's mass, causing it to acquire speed and accelerate. If the ship does not alter course, it will eventually plummet toward the planet, but if it has thrusters that allow it to stay far enough away from the planet, it will gain speed and continue on its new trajectory. This approach enables spacecraft to visit several destinations in a single trip and travel longer distances in less time, but it has a drawback. The problem is that it only works if planets are in your path, so you must take advantage of times when they are aligned, which does not always happen. The Voyager ships were able to travel so far because they took advantage of a specific planetary alignment in which the four gas giant planets would be very close to each other, allowing the spaceships to gain the necessary speed to leave the solar system by utilizing the gravity of the four planets. In 1979, the Voyager 1 spacecraft took advantage of this alignment during a close flyby of Jupiter. In contrast, Voyager 2 used a series of planetary gravity assistance to pass Jupiter in 1979, Saturn 1981, Uranus 1986, and Neptune 1989. As a result, the Voyager 2 probe became the first artifact built by humanity to reach the solar system's final planet. Voyager 2 Travel Voyager 2 launched in 1977 and set out on an epic mission through the solar system. During its trip to more distant planets, it relied on gravity aid from Jupiter and Saturn. After more than a decade of travel, Voyager 2 neared Neptune in August 1989, becoming the first and only spacecraft to examine this planet up close. Voyager 2 obtained breathtaking photographs of Neptune, its rings, and moons during its approach of the planet. It discovered characteristics like Jupiter's great red spot, such as the great dark spot, the flyby of Neptune by Voyager 2 revealed crucial information on this distant gas giant and its system, significantly contributing to our understanding of the outer planets and beyond. However, it should be noted that Voyager 2 did not remain on Neptune but moved on to the stars. If we wanted Voyager 2 to stay in Neptune's orbit, we would have to consider the braking time, or the time it would take for the spacecraft to slow down enough to land in Neptune's orbit without flying off into space elsewhere. How does that sound? Isn't slamming on the brakes like a car enough? No. Planets, 
comets, spaceships, and everything else in space travel at breakneck speed. To remain in orbit around a planet, a spacecraft must have the same orbital velocity as the planet. Orbital speed. To better understand this, imagine a car race, in car races, all the cars move at extremely high speeds, and although each car moves at a different speed, they all move so fast that if one of the drivers were to suddenly brake, it would not stay in the place where it braked, but would advance several tens of meters until it completely braked. The similar process happens with spaceships. When they leave Earth, they must travel at very high speeds to escape our planet's gravity, and each time they pass by a planet to benefit from gravitational aid, they gain more and more speed. Neptune's orbital speed is 3.38 miles per second, which is comparable to around 5.43 kilometers per second or 19,550 kilometers per hour. This means that if we wanted to orbit Neptune, it would have to reach that speed because if it didn't, it would never reach the planet in its journey around the sun, and if it did, once the planet's force of gravity catches it, it will pull it until the spaceship crashes into the planet because it doesn't have enough speed to overcome the force of gravity. In contrast, if a spacecraft went significantly faster than Neptune's orbital speed, it would fly off the planet. The only method to settle on the planet is to achieve an orbital velocity that is similar to or greater than the escape velocity. And herein lays the major issue. The Voyager 2 probe reached a speed of 9.6313 miles per second or 15.5 kilometers per second, which is nearly 55,800 kilometers per hour when it employed gravity assist to improve its speed when traveling close to the gas giant planets. That is, it was three times quicker than Neptune's orbital speed. To enter Neptune's orbit, the ship would have to conduct a braking maneuver with thrusters set to a third of their maximum speed. Because the Voyager probes had no intention of landing in the orbit of any planet, this move was impossible to carry out. But if a human crewed mission of astronauts planned to arrive in Neptune's orbit, how would they execute the braking? The only method to slow down enough to land on Neptune is with propulsion engines and a human crewed spaceship is far larger than a space research probe, requiring much more fuel. Braking is more difficult in space. Although it appears to be a simple process, halting a fast-moving spaceship is a difficult undertaking. In fact, it is something that has never been done in the history of space exploration. We have witnessed spacecraft accelerate upon entering the atmospheres of planets such as Mars or Earth. Nonetheless, we have never slowed a ship traveling at more than 9.6313 miles per second and placed it in orbit around a planet. A spaceship the size of Voyager 2 would require more than 10 times its weight in fuel to complete the braking procedure, which would take between 1 and 2 months. Yes, as you may have heard, when braking in a vehicle race, they continue to advance a few meters. In space, the ships continue to advance several thousand kilometers after beginning to stop. The reason is, once again, speed. The Voyager probe had to travel at a great speed to reach Neptune, but the braking process to stay on Neptune would be extremely slow. Now, in the case of a human crewed spacecraft with four astronauts, this would be at least 20 times bigger and heavier than the Voyager probe, that is, it would require 20 times more fuel to break and 20 times more time, if not more, because it does not take the same amount of time to stop a space exploration probe as it does a human crewed spacecraft with humans. Let us imagine that in 120 years, when the four gas planets align again, we launch the first human crewed spaceship bound for Neptune, with four brave astronauts on board who will replicate the same journey that Voyager 2 took in the 1980s, passing through Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and finally Neptune. If the calculations are correct and they take advantage of all the gravitational assists, they should reach Neptune in about 12 years, similar to Voyager 2, but it may take them a little longer because a manned spacecraft is much larger and heavier than a scanning probe. Furthermore, astronauts cannot be subjected to high g-forces, therefore they would be unable to use gravity support like Voyager 2 did. 
If the spacecraft in which the astronauts go is 20 times heavier than Voyager 2, the journey will most likely take 22 to 24 years rather than 12 years. Even though gravity helps reduce the risks of being subjected to G-forces, the astronauts will not be able to stay on that planet unless they break, and this is where the actual challenging part begins. When slowing a human crewed spaceship, passengers submit to the inertial force generated by the deceleration process. Because the human body cannot sustain such forces, the braking mechanism of the spacecraft carrying men to Neptune must be extremely slow. How slow is it? It could take them between two and four years. As previously stated, slowing down takes two to four years, implying that the total travel from Earth to Neptune should take between 24 and 28 years. And this while utilizing all available resources such as propulsion rockets, specific planetary alignment, gravitational assistance, and so on. Isn't it astonishing that even with all of humanity's resources, it takes us nearly three decades to reach the last planet in the solar system? Furthermore, we are discussing a trip with no return because the fuel we are proposing for this movie will only be used for braking. Once the astronauts arrive at Neptune, they will not have enough fuel to return to Earth. To compute a spaceship with enough fuel to return to Earth, the spaceship would have to be 1,000 times larger. Not to mention that more than 90% of a spaceship is just fuel. As a result, the amount of fuel required to get from Neptune to Earth would be enormous, much exceeding the amount used by all of humanity's rockets throughout history. What do you think guys, do you believe we'll be able to send humans to Neptune? Or will we have to wait for advancements in space travel technology? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.